In this series of videos, we're going to be covering a topic in organic chemistry. We're going to be discussing how to interpret electron pushing arrows, also known as curved arrows. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to predict the products when you've been given the electron pushing arrows. So let me give you an example of the type of problem that we will be dealing with in these videos. So here's an example of the type of problem that we will be dealing with in this series of videos. Uh, you've been given this starting material. You've already been given the electron pushing arrows, or maybe you came up with the electron pushing arrows on your own. And the next step is to actually draw the product that is suggested by these electron pushing arrows. What is actually going to be the product of this reaction? Uh, in this series of videos, we're going to learn how to answer this question, how to actually draw the correct product. Uh, why don't you actually uh, pause the video right now and see if you can do this problem already. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can draw the correct product from these electron pushing arrows. Okay, I hope you paused the video and gave that a shot. Uh, and now we'll show you what the correct product looks like. So here's the correct product. So here's the correct product from, uh, or products from uh, these electron pushing arrows. Uh, so the products, uh, we actually get uh, two different products uh, in this case. So now we've uh, answered this question. Here are the products from these electron pushing arrows. Um, okay, uh, so this is an example of the type of problem that, uh, like I said, we'll be learning how to solve uh, in this series of videos, how to draw the, the product once you've been uh, given the arrows. Uh, let me make a couple other comments uh, about that. Actually, one comment I might make is uh, you can see that I've drawn two separate products here, the, the nitrogen-containing ring and the iodide. Uh, maybe I should mention that oftentimes if you have two charged substances, they're often uh, kind of drawn uh, close to each other to indicate that they're balancing each other. So another way this might be written In this case, the iodide might just be drawn close to the nitrogen to show the charge on the iodide balancing out uh, the charge uh, on the nitrogen, uh, almost as if they were a uh, ionic compound. Uh, so that's another way that uh, the product might be drawn in this case. Uh, but certainly the important thing is that the iodide is no longer covalently bonded to any of these other atoms. The iodide is no longer covalently bonded uh, to any of the other atoms uh, in the problem. Okay, so like I said, that's an example of the uh, type of problem uh, that we're going to be learning how to solve together here. Um, so uh, to make a, a couple comments here, uh, first of all, um, one of the things that often gives people difficulty here is figuring out where to put the bonds in the product. Uh, for example, uh, I'll bet that a lot of the students who tried to draw this product on their own, I'll bet a lot of, uh, a lot of you didn't realize that we were going to end up with a cyclic product. Uh, that is, you, you didn't uh, put the bonds uh, in the right place. So that's one of the things that we're going to try to, to learn how to do, uh, where to put the bonds uh, in uh, the right place. Also, you might have actually broken some bonds that you shouldn't have. Perhaps some of you actually broke these hydrogens off of the nitrogen, uh, but you can see that they're not breaking off of the nitrogen. So it's also important to know which bonds not to break. Also, um, here's something else that maybe a, a lot of you might have gotten wrong about uh, this example, which is that you might not have gotten the charges right. Uh, especially, um, there's a good chance that many people might not have realized that the nitrogen ends up with a positive charge uh, in this picture. And one thing I want to emphasize from, from the very beginning of this series of videos is that the most important part of drawing the products is getting the charges right. Uh, this is something I, I think that unfortunately is not clear to, to many students. The charges are not an afterthought. Uh, if anything, the charges are the whole point. The charges are the most important part uh, of the picture, 
If you're going to get the charges wrong, you might as well not bother drawing the picture in the first place. Uh, it's useless to get the bonds in the right locations if you're not going to get the charges right uh, as well. So again, unfortunately, I think a lot of students think of the charges as a kind of an afterthought um, that they, uh, they'll, they'll worry about if they feel like it. Um, so I really want to convince you from the beginning here that the charges are the most important part about drawing uh, the correct picture of a molecule in organic chemistry. Uh, so one thing we're definitely going to be focusing on in this series of videos is not just how to figure out which bonds to form and which bonds to break, uh, but even more important, we're going to have to focus on um, how to get the charges right in your products. Something else to mention about this little example that I gave you uh, is that um, this is a SN2 reaction. Uh, some of you might not be far enough along in your course yet to have learned about SN2, but many of you might have heard uh, the name of an SN2 reaction. Uh, in fact, to be even more specific, we could call this a intramolecular SN2 reaction. An intramolecular SN2 reaction. Uh, now, the key point I wanted to make, though, is even if you've never heard of SN2 reactions before, or even if you had no idea that this was an SN2 reaction, you should still have been able to draw the right product as soon as I gave you the electron pushing arrows. So this is another important theme from this series of videos. Once you've been given the electron pushing arrows, or once you've figured out what the electron pushing arrows are, it doesn't matter whether you know the name of the mechanism or the reaction or not. It doesn't matter whether you've ever seen this reaction before or not. Even if you've never heard of an SN2 or seen an SN2 reaction before, since I've already given you the arrows, um, it should be clear what the product is going to be. And if it wasn't clear to you what the product was going to be, that means that you actually don't understand electron pushing arrows yet. And that really is, is the point of this whole series of videos. The point of this whole series of videos is to explain what the electron pushing arrows really mean so that once you know what the electron pushing arrows are, it should be easy and obvious to figure out what the correct product is. Okay, so again, the point I'm trying to make here um, is that once you've got the electron pushing arrows, it doesn't matter whether you're doing a mechanism that you're familiar with or a mechanism you've never seen before. The electron pushing arrows tell you exactly what the product should be, um, regardless of whether you've actually heard of that specific mechanism uh, before. Uh, all right, now again, um, what, one question that might pop into your mind is, how do we know that these are the correct electron pushing arrows? How would we know that this is the reaction that's actually going to happen? How would we know in the first place to draw in these electron pushing arrows? Um, well, it, it's possible that early, uh, well, sometimes you're simply going to be given the electron pushing arrows by somebody else. Sometimes somebody will simply tell you these are the electron pushing arrows and what's the product that you can get from that. Uh, but of course, usually in your OCHEM course, you're going to be expected to come up with the electron pushing arrows on your own. Usually you're going to be expected to know that these are two reasonable electron pushing arrows. So how would we know that these two arrows are reasonable arrows that we should draw in this case? Well, that's a very important question that I am not going to cover in this series of videos. So just to be clear, this series of videos is not about figuring out which electron pushing arrows to draw. In this series of videos, I'm not going to tell you why these are reasonable electron pushing arrows. Instead, all the problems in this series of videos, I'm just going to give you the electron pushing arrows. I'm just going to tell you what the electron pushing arrows are. Uh, and all we're going to discuss is how to get the right product once you already know or once you've already been given the electron pushing arrows. Now, uh, again, that's not because it's not important to know how to come up with electron pushing arrows. It's very important to know how to come up with the electron pushing arrows, but that's just not the topic I'm going to cover in this series of videos. Um, also, uh, the other reason I'm not going to do that, uh, I guess a couple different reasons I'm not going to uh, talk about how to come up with the electron pushing arrows. One reason is until you can understand electron pushing arrows when you've been given them, until you understand how to interpret electron pushing arrows, you're not going to be able to know how to put the electron pushing arrows in on your own. So this is really a topic that you need to learn before you learn how to come up with the electron pushing arrows on your own. Uh, again, the point that I was making there is before you can learn how to come up with the electron pushing arrows, you need to learn how to interpret electron pushing arrows once they've already been given. Uh, so this topic comes first. Uh, and after you've mastered this topic of interpreting electron pushing arrows, you'll be in better shape to go ahead and then learn how to come up with the electron pushing arrows uh, on your own. Uh, possibly that might be a topic I might cover in some future series of videos, but that's uh, not what I'm covering uh, in this case. So in all the problems in this series of videos, I will just give you the electron pushing arrows.